Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Alison Wells. I'm a community engagement officer with both the North East Somerset Council. And these are our regular interagency meetings, which we hold every other month. Um, we're now holding them by Zoom. We did hold them physically before, but I think a lot of people are finding them easy to dip into by Zoom. They are really informal meetings. And the idea is for you all to share information with each other and to network. Um, so do make good use of the chat facility. If you pop your um, names into the chat, that will be great. And then we will have a record of who's here. And um, if you've not been to one before, um, what I'm gonna do is just whiz, whiz round uh, um, each of you individually and ask you to, um, share the information that you want to share, whether that's explaining about your service or any particular updates you want to, to give the, the group. Um, do remember to stay on mute when other people are speaking. And as I say, make really good use of the chat to network and to share contact information and details with each other. Um, right, so is there anything else I need to say? Oh yes, does anybody need to get away early? That needs to go on first. Jesse and Andrew Brill. Okay. Oh, got a couple more. Let me. Right. Jesse, um, do you want, I know you came along to observe today. Do you want, want to just say a few words or would you rather just watch? No, that's fine. I'll just um, introduce myself if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go, go for it. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name's Jessie. I'm a community sort of regional outreach officer um, working on the community support fund for the West of England Combined Authority. Um, so I don't know if you've heard anything about the Community Support Fund, some of you will probably be familiar with it, we've had one round of funding recently, um, we've got a second call of funding um, that's coming up in April, um, so it's good to just highlight that amongst you all because the fund itself is basically um, reaching out to voluntary sector organisations to um, put in applications for potential projects with people that are in the combined authority area um, working with groups of people that are over the age of 19 and also um, in a group that is has been sort of disproportionately affected by COVID. Um, the idea is that it's to help groups of people that have been sort of far removed from work and skills and employment um, prior to COVID, you know, research has shown that they have been disproportionately affected as a result of COVID. COVID. So a, a lot of their situation has been sort of um, exacerbated um, over the last couple of years. So it's it's working with all kinds of groups of people. Um, we've got, we've got, excuse me, of our current projects, we've got five that are underway. They're working with, for example, um, people that are socially isolated with mental health issues and supporting them through green projects and getting them outdoors, doing some green skills and upskilling that way. Um, and also it's just creating that sense of pride of place, those kinds of key things that we want to be able to support people, provide that sort of wraparound um, support. Um, other projects are working with young people, people from BAME backgrounds, carers, um, um, just generally sort of um, different groups of people that may find it hard to access skills and work and just basically giving them that first step of engagement um, towards sort of skills um, and coming up with some beautiful programmes of support that we can sort of offer these groups of people that have a bit more wraparound care and sort of be, you know, take into account that there's sort of different, different areas of need that we want to be able to support uh, in order for them to make those next steps. So if you're at all interested um, in, in sort of finding out a, bit, out a bit more, you can go to our website. Um, it will be on there. I'll put a link in the chat for everybody. We do have a second call coming up in April. 
Um, it would be great. I, I mean, Alison, it may be good to, to chat to you separately when we have a meeting scheduled, but it'd be great to find out from you all what, what, you know, what would be good places to advertise the second call, make sure we're getting that reach across organisations like yourselves to make sure that we are sort of sharing that it's here and we want people to apply to it. Um, so yeah, do, do bear it in mind, do share it. When I obviously give the information out, please do share that amongst um, any other groups that you know. Um, it'd be really useful to obviously get, get, get it out to as far and wide as possible within the region. Great, Jesse. thank you ever so much. And um, yeah, we're, we're obviously meeting soon to have a, a chat, but yeah, we, if, for those of you who don't know, we've got a funding journal that is kept on our website all the time. It's just a PDF document. It's very simple and you, it's probably a bit clumsy to search because you need to just put some keywords in. Um, but the latest funding opportunities that we get are always there and, and um, a few are highlighted when we send out our monthly interagency bulletins, but that resource is there all the time for you to use. And I know 3SG also have a very popular e-newsletter and can help with promotion, but that'd be great. So yeah, and look forward to having a, a proper chat with you um, when we meet. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Alison. Thank you. Andrew, I think you needed to get away. Do you want to, to go next? Yes, thank you very much, Alison. So uh, my name's Andrew West. There's a few people on here I've named faces I recognise. Um, I am a career progression coach on the Future Bright programme. I don't know if, if everyone's aware of that. Hopefully by now everyone is. Um, so we cover the Baines area. Um, it's for residents that live in Baines. Um, they've got to be over 18 in paid work at, at the time of wanting to sign up or self-employed with an income um if they're claiming a, a benefit it's normally the umbrella around universal credit that's fine as well but if they're in paid work or self-employed and their income is below the real living wage which is nine pounds 90 now then um as long as they're below that but not claiming benefits then they would still be eligible for the program and if we do get anyone who's referred to us and they're not eligible then we we certainly offer them as much uh, coaching support and signposting as we can if they want to when they have a, when they have a conversation with us um the same program is in bristol and south gloss got the same criteria there as well and um within our bigger team which is business and skills if if we do have people that come to us and they're not eligible, we've also got services now within the, the business and skills team that we can refer people to get information, advice, guidance, support. And we've also got someone who uh, talks to employers about jobs and also volunteer opportunities as well. So there's a, a, a much wider support area now if people do come to Future Bright. Um, and the, there's three ways to do it. There's a there's a phone number, a main phone number. There's a, a main email address, or they can go onto Future Bright and just do a very quick referral. And it's it's postcode, phone number, name, phone number, and email address. And that's all they need to do. And then we follow up with with phone calls and see if we can see if we can help and support. All right, that's it. Great, thanks, Andrew. Anyone got any questions for Andrew or for Jesse? I should have asked that then as well. <laughs> no, no. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, then, yeah. Andrew. Um, I'm just going to go round the screen now that I can see. Um, so, Ellen, um, Ellen Bloxham, welcome. I think it's your first interagency, so very warm welcome to you. Um, Hi. Looking forward to, to hearing about your organisation. Okay, so um, I am from Rainbow Trust Children's Charity, the Southwest team. We cover Swindon, Wiltshire, South East Oxfordshire, Bristol, Bath and North East Somerset. And as of April, we are also expanding into Gloucester. Um, so our service is for families who have seriously ill children. We support sick children themselves, their siblings and their parents. And occasionally we have supported wider family members as well, like grandparents. Um, our support is very tailored to each family and their circumstances, but it can include respite in hospitals and in homes, which is sort of play support for the children to give parents a bit of a break. Um, we also offer transport as well, so things like school runs and um, getting children to and from medical appointments. Um, referrals can be made via our website, there is a form on there, 
that you can fill in and someone will contact you. Um, if you would like any other information, then yeah, do get in touch and visit our website as well. So I'll put the address to the website in the chat box. That's great, Ellen. Thank you. Has anyone got any questions for Ellen? No? Just me. Ellen, um, are you, have you heard of our um, databases? Are you in touch with the team at Baines that, that look after those? I don't think so, no. I'll, I'll, um, I'll drop you some information. I'll try and do it in the chat if I can. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, but it's to get that information out there on our rainbow resource, particularly, which is the oh, perfect. Software. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and we've also a Bath Area Play project, a really good newsletter um, that some, some of you may get, which is um, full of information aimed at, at uh, families and, and young people. Oh, so perfect. That'd be brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Andrews, you yeah. Andrews. Yes, go Sorry, ahead. Um, do you... Um... Do, do you have a setup in Gloucester then now or is we it don't at the moment but we are okay. expanding into Gloucester as of sort of the end of April I would say um okay. so yeah it'll be set up sort of end of April early May that's good I, I live in Gloucester so that's why I was asking. oh yeah no so yeah, yeah we'll yeah. be active in Gloucester as of then brilliant okay thank you no and Ellen sorry Ellen I'm Kate Stoby um new to the meeting but I was just going to say so I've got a terrible cold I was oh, just okay. going to say that I personally our family have used your services in Baines and it was amazing oh brilliant oh good <laughs> yeah for my daughter so it really made a big difference oh so amazing that's lovely totally totally recommend it thank you that's brilliant it's a pleasure oh that's great thank you everyone that's brilliant thanks Alan I'll be I'll be in touch with you no problem um, thanks Alison I think we've got a couple more coming in right Richard Summer Valley FM Look at that, already late for broadcast. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Alison. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I run Summer Valley FM. Uh, we are in North East Somerset, Midsummer Norton. Uh, shortly, well, a year and a half or so, we'll be on DAB across um, Bath as well as North East Somerset, and we're already on Bristol. Uh, I try and support a lot of the people that I hear about on here, as well as pick up tips and advice. We are a not-for-profit. We're a community radio station with 64 volunteers now. So, so, for instance, West of England Combined Authority, I thought that was uh, some really interesting stuff talked about there. We have Dan Norris come on uh, and we interview him about WECA things as we do across Baines as well. So we have the, mayor, uh, we have the um, Kevin Guy from Baines and some of the other councils as well. So I'm really here to help promote um, stuff that's relevant to the North East Somerset area. Uh, the Hive were on the last time we all met in Peterborough St John and I had them on. I featured them and I broadcast out some details about them. Uh, so I'm really here to, as I said, to pick up some tips. I need to raise funds as does everybody else, along with supporting other people's um, concerns and charities where I can. Thank you. That's great. Anyone got any questions for Richard? Um, all right, gonna move on then, thanks Richard. Move on to Michelle, Michelle Gorham. Hi, hi, good afternoon. Um, I am from um, a new care home, actually, it's just a CDI behind me at the moment, which is being built, uh, called Midford Manor Care Home. Um, those in Bath may or may not know, it's being built up in Odd Down uh, by the big Sainsbury's, if you've seen a building site there, that's what's going there. Um, we are a private company, but obviously the real important thing for us will be um, community links, um, uh, working with our community, the residents that move into, into the care home, it will be very important to them to stay in touch with their local community, charitable events and those sorts of things. So for me, it's just really good to um, kind of know what's going on in the community, um, take note of some names and things that I might be in contact with you at some point. Uh, we will also carry out events. We're already doing a charitable event uh, where we'll raise money for a local charity so things like that will be done in the future as well um, as most know that our, our elderly population uh, even if they move environments they still want to very much be a part of their local community doing you know community things so so really this is first time for me um, at this meeting um, but just good to find out what everyone does and, um, and make note of some contacts that's lovely Michelle 
Yes, I've been watching that go up as I've been going to Sainsbury's at Odd Down. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, progress, good progress on it. Um, yeah, I, are you signed up to our interagency bulletin? I think I have just been signed up, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll, do, I'll, I'll double check. Good yeah, check. Be, Thank you. You know, and this is for everyone. There's lot, obviously lots of useful information in there. I'm very, very happy to promote things. Um, usually comes out once a month. Just, just send me what what you've got, and and I'll and I'll pop it in. Um, yeah, so that's an open offer to everyone attending today. Right, um, Kimberly, Kimberly Tyler. I have to apologise because I'm using my friend's link, so I'm actually Kerry. <laughs> Kimberly couldn't be here today. Um, so I'm Kerry. I'm part of the Children's Healthy Weight team at HCRG's Wellbeing Service. Um, so I'll just give you a quick reminder of our services and um, the Community Wellbeing Hub, which we're part of. Um, so we have one of our courses is Cook It, which is a five um, session cook along um series um which focuses on family friendly budget and healthy meals um they're an hour long and we talk about healthy eating such as the eat well guide um at the end of the session the families get a 25 pound voucher that covers the cost of ingredients um we've it, it has been done virtually but um we've got some face-to-face -face dates coming up or we're trying, sorry, we're trying to get some face-to-face -face, um, sessions sorted at the moment. Um, we also offer Henry, which is um, an eight-week supportive family course for parents with children below the ages of five. Um, they discuss uh, topics about feeling more confident as a parent, uh, physical activities and healthy family lifestyle um it's really it's a really great supportive community so it's really it's really nice for the families to come together and do that um we also have the leap program which is for children above the ideal healthy weight um at the moment that's one-to-one -one virtual classes but in april we are going back face to face uh, for that um and once they complete the leap sessions they get a three month free physical activity sessions at their local leisure center um yeah and we also have the community well-being hub which is um uh, where people can be referred to food support uh citizens advice um mental health so yeah everything like that so i can get i can put the information telephone numbers and dates and stuff in the chat if it's useful that'd be great Kim. has anyone anyone got any questions sorry kerry has anyone got any questions for kerry no okay thanks ever so much thank you i'm gonna move on now to lucy bartlett hi lucy hi, uh, <coughs> excuse me hi um yeah, I used to come along to these meetings in Fox Hill and um, the ones that were in um, Southdown for a bit, but I haven't been for a little while, so it's nice to see everybody again. Um, I'm from a project called Barscape, and we're a partnership project of lots of organisations involved with the care of the countrysides around Bath. So our project is twofold. One is improving improving habitats working with landowners and doing some volunteering sessions but the other part of it is the people side of it and so that's encouraging people to get get out and actively enjoy it and we do that through a range of things like walking groups and um volunteering and we have a walking festival in september and one of the things that we're interested in is seeing if we can get more we've also got a big sort of training and skills element to it obviously out, outside outdoor skills um, and we're really interested in seeing if we can tap into a few more sort of younger unemployed people who could come along and get some experience working alongside our volunteers. So that's one of the things that we're interested in. Um, yeah, that's probably, that's probably enough. Thanks, Lucy. Anyone got any questions or comments? No? Okay, well, we're moving on now to uh, Tom, Tom Fox. 
Hi everyone. Um, it's interesting when you say if there's any questions. Um, often it's it's I'd like to say things like, "Oh, thank you very much to the Rainbow Trust because we get referrals from them for carers." So um, and uh, it's that it's that kind of thing rather than questions. So uh, yeah, I work for the Carer Centre and uh, we support unpaid carers aged five and upwards. So um, for the Young Carers Service, I think uh, the uh, Children's Healthy Well Weight Team might be really useful for um, uh, um, our Young Carers Team. So it's information like that is brilliant for us to pass on to our team, and hopefully that can generate. Um, some support work for our carers. So um, try and keep it brief. Um, we're still doing a lot of support uh, for carers. Um, we're doing a lot of grants. I've been quite successful in applying for grants for carers. Um, and as, as well as the telephone support team who are quite useful for queries from professionals as, as well as those from carers. I often say oh, it's quicker than Googling. I think Googling can be really hard these days days trying to get the right information you can take ages so i just say email the support team they can do it for you um so the the main thrust of the work we do is support for carers we do a lot of well-being activities uh, we're doing well-being walks now i'm um, getting out and about we're doing in-person cafes so we are moving away from the um online stuff although we're still doing that because obviously a lot of carers are looking after people who are quite vulnerable so um, along with a lot of members of the public, we're still continuing to wear masks and so on, although we can't enforce it, but generally people do tend to wear masks. So a lot of the wellbeing stuff is really important. Uh, we do book clubs, craft clubs, creative writing, mental health support group for carers. Uh, we do a cafe for carers of people with mental health difficulties. Um, we also um, do employment support as well. So anybody who is a carer and in work, um, please do contact us. One thing I was going to mention, and I don't know whether any organisations here um, have sort of plans or contingency plans for it is the national insurance raise in April and the energy cost raise. So if, if anyone is doing any work around that and uh, has anything that they can offer carers or any of our clients really, then um, you know please do let us know. I have no idea what's going to happen really from April in terms of the pressures people are going to be under. I guess we just have to play it by ear. Oh, someone's got their hand up. I'm going to get asked a question now after I said, oh, no one's asked a question. <laughs> Don't oh, worry, Tom. Go for it. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you any question or anything like that. <laughs> so, so you're all good. Um, I was just going to say that actually one thing that we are doing um, to try and raise awareness and support organisations with the, yeah, the fuel increases um, in particular um, is we partnered up with Citizens Advice. Um, oh, okay. And we're we're running some fuel poverty workshops. Um, so these are aimed at um, health professionals, um, volunteers, anybody in the charity sector or outside of the charity sector it could be in a care care home or um, if you're a carer. Basically, anybody could benefit from it. I went to the first one and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is like there's so many like tips and ways in which we can all benefit from making little savings as well as knowing what support is out there particularly when it comes to you know support with those everyday um, essentials and and paying for your for your fuel bill so that's like heating electricity all of, all of that sort of stuff so I'll um I'll put in the the chat the dates for that because we've got an online one coming up at the end of this month and then we've got an in-person one um, with a free buffet available to try and entice people to actually meet in person <laughs> um, in in middle of uh, April. So, um, but that's just one thing that we're doing. I'm sure Citizens Advice know lots more support that's out there. So it's also an opportunity to speak to them about other ways in which they can support. Excellent. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Very useful. Well, I think I can see Denise waving as well. Just a thought. Uh, I know that um, Bath College, um, I received some information. I don't think there's anyone on the call from Bath College, but they were doing courses. Um, and obviously, they if you talk to, I mostly speak to the adult community learning uh, team, 
they what they do bespoke training if if they if you tell them what you want and what you feel is needed they will find amongst their tutors um they'll rustle up a course for you whether that's an online one or in person whatever the best person to speak to is anna wheeler uh, there are other contacts there but uh, certainly well worth punting that with them but miles it miles what well, miles offers is excellent but as i say it's it's different uh, ra age ranges as well that's and great. all three <laughs> yeah thanks everyone and this is exactly what this meeting's for so yeah do do feel free to 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 chat to each other um really welcome i'm going to move on now to jill jill robert oh no richard richard's got his hand up sorry richard missed you there no problem it's just a quickie just to follow up on what denise was saying there it's kelly I, i'm actually the, i'm playing out details of what bath college are offering uh for people that are struggling financially on friday kelly vaughan watkins is the contact for acl uh bath college she's based at the summer valley campus tune in from midday on friday you'll hear all her contact details here end of the advert. Thanks, Richard. I'm going to try and multitask and look them up and pop them in the chat if I can. So we did register for the meeting. Um, so she, she may appear, um, but I'll see if I can get those and pass those on. Um, right, Jill, Jill Roberts, Playlist for Life. Welcome. Thank you, um, Alison. Uh, this is my first time um, at one of these meetings. Um, I'm a communities officer for Playlist for Life. Some of you um, may have had contact with my colleague, Sarinda Baines. Um, basically, uh, Playlist for Life is a, is a national music and dementia charity, and we want everyone living with dementia to have access to their own personalised music playlist. And for everyone who loves, cares and supports them um, to have access to that playlist and, and to know how to use it. Um, and uh, we have loads and loads of free resources on our website. Um, and the reason we're so passionate um, about music for people living with dementia is that there's now over 20 years of evidence showing the difference um, that music can make uh, when it's when it's personalized music. So it's got to be the tracks that are special to you, uh, but um, it can make an enormous difference um, to somebody's mood, to their day, and to their overall quality of life. And it can also make a huge difference um, to, as I say, carers particularly, um, who, are, who are supporting them and, and family members. Um, we've got a, a growing network of help points um, based in the community all over the country. Uh, we've got over 1,800 now, um, and a number of um, people in this meeting um, are, are with organizations who I think um, uh, most of most of whom signed up as as help points or information points actually during lockdown probably uh, last year or the year before um, so uh, we've tried to be really flexible about how we work um, to support those community organizations we're in terms of a staff team we're a relatively small charity um, and so what we do is um, we want to connect with um, with community organisations and groups, um, because you are the people who are in in touch with those people who would who would benefit most. Um, so we work with care homes, carers organisations, um, uh, rural organisations and groups, um, and we now have um, some of our materials, which you can find on our website, translated into over um, ten different languages. That's that's us. That's lovely, Jill. Thank you. Has anyone got any comments or questions for Jill? No. Jill, if you want to um, drop me a little email, I'll pop my email address in the chat um, because we, we have featured Playlist for Life in the interagency bulletin in the past, but it's been a while. So it'd be nice to do a little you know, follow up article just Fantastic. to get that Thanks. message out there. So yeah, just That's send brilliant. me Thanks, send Alison. me any information you'd like us to share. Yeah, That's I great. Will. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Denise Perrin. Oh, Alison. I oh, think, I think you just had a hand raised. Did I have a hand? Oh, Scarlett. Scarlett, sorry, sorry. No worries. Um, I was just, I, I was just mostly going to comment um on the on the on Joe's uh, playlists because. 
in a previous role, I, I worked in a care home and it was, it, you really did see the difference in people's eyes lighting up with, with dementia patients when they had familiar songs because I did the, uh, the um, activities. So we used to do all of the songs and um, trying to, you know, familiarize, uh, use anything familiar from um, years and years back. But the, another thing that one or two dementia patients really responded to, it was all dependent on the individual, was um, poetry. Um, so I don't know whether on your playlists you have uh, like audible type, like audio poetry or anything, because that was always really nice. We've, um, we've got um, hundreds and hundreds of playlists on, on Spotify. Um, if, if you search for um, uh, playlist dementia, you'll, you'll find them all. And, and we have been talking increasingly about poetry. I, off the top of my head, Scarlett, I can't remember if we've got any poetry specific. We are actually in the process of, um, I know uh, somebody's putting together a, a Robbie Burns playlist for us, for um, Scotland's poet. Um, but absolutely, you know, poetry shares so much with music in terms of, sort of rhythm and rhyme. Um, and it's, I, I mean, I've, I've worked in actually hundreds of care homes myself in another role and seeing you know well all of us you know we've all got stuff stuff there that you don't realize is there and it's quite extraordinary sometimes um and poetry does yeah absolutely that 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 brings it out for for many people thanks yeah. cool thanks that's lovely thank you right please perrin Hi, I'm Denise Perrin from the Village Agents. Um, we now cover all of the um, rural areas of Bath and North East Somerset. So um, that's a recent expansion. We're really pleased about that. Um, mostly working one to one with people, um, uh, signposting them onto other organisations and also um, making uh, referrals to organisations who um, our specialists, so uh, people like Tom um, and uh, well, lots of different organisations, CAB, what have you. So that's the core service. But what I wanted to mention today is that, um, well, I, I'm still fingers crossed because just as we are planning um, our first uh, our first event, which is public event, which is next Tuesday, there's been a, another wave of COVID hitting all the local schools. So a lot of people are going down with it. We've but we've had some money which we've been trying to spend for the last two years of, uh, on um, events that promote positive driving experiences for those people who are over 60. Many people are sort of um, had a terrible time after uh, lockdowns. Um, they put their car in the garages or the drives or on the road and they didn't bother and then they had to get back driving. So a lot of people are trying to decide whether or not they want to continue driving. Um, and our, uh, we've teamed up with the road safety team, Somerset uh, road safety team, and they are absolutely brilliant at doing a seminar about why you should be trying to keep going, what things to watch in yourself um, that can be improved, even things like being able to being able to be, get be more flexible so that you can turn around and put your belt on and do your reversing. Lots of great tips. Anyway, that's the core of the event. The first one is in Ubley uh, Village. So if none of you have ever been out into the wilds of Bath and North East Somerset, Ubley is a treat for you. Um, and uh, but the great thing is that we open the doors early um and for the at least an hour to an hour and a half before the talk uh we invite organizations to come and just have a free stall at the event just be there so you can start meeting people talking it's a great net way to network between yourselves as well so we've got ugly um in um next week um, you would need to be there at nine o'clock, ready to open the doors to the public at 10, but you could be away by half past 11. Then we've got one in um, Coombe Down at the Mulberry Park Hub in at, towards the end of April and one at the lovely Hive in Pease Down St John at the end of June. We are also looking at collaborations going forwards because there's a lot of new teams that are emerging out of COVID so you heard earlier on from one of the teams about the um, uh, how to change your lifestyle 
as it were, giving up smoking or whatever, but also other lifestyle things and well-being um, and initiatives. There's so many. So we thought that we would try and team up with some some of you partner organisations to do smaller events in other locations. We're particularly interested in doing that in areas that won't necessarily be on everyone's list. So Ubley is one of them. It's a great location, but also Midsummer Norton, Radstock, Peas Down is fantastic, but there's a lot of really great rural locations. So we want to take some of this stuff out into the those areas. So um, I have my uh, emails in the chat. So if anyone wants to join the party, it, we always have great fun. It's always good to, to, to meet everyone. alison has been supporting us in events for years and years, and we've had some crazy one of the best ones, I think, was uh, when people came in the morning and learnt circus skills. And if you've ever seen a chap with Parkinson's doubled over, but balancing a peacock feather on his hand, it was delightful. And lots of dancing and music. This one's going to be, be a bit more sedate, but um, it will be no less fun. So um, that's my advert for, for going forwards. But the village agents, as I say, fantastic toy team emerging. We're moving from having four people to village agents to nine and it's going to be fantastic thank you oh that's lovely denise and yes i can highly recommend the events they really are great fun i think the last one i went to was in ubley actually and um, i'm off to chew stoke this afternoon what a lovely day for a trip to the chew valley looking forward um denise, do you want to quickly just um let people know the areas the village agents are now covering in in bath and north east somerset Okay, so I'll, we started with the Chew Valley. So if you if, if you th can think of the Bath and North East Somerset map, which isn't always, you probably don't have, need to look at that very often. But anyway, the left hand side west of, of the area. So it's all those ones you can't spell like Nemnitz, Rubwell, Ubley, Compton, um, Martin, through to Bishop Sutton, and then you go up to Chew Stoke, Chew Magna, um, the harp trees, Hinton, Blewett. So all of those lovely villages, all got lovely pubs, by the way, and they're all open now. Uh, so all of those obvious areas, then along the main road to places like Pensford and uh, Farnborough, Farrington, Gurney. So the Soma Valley, Midsummer Norton, Radstock, Westfield. But our extension more recently is uh, Kate's here on the call today. She's going to be taking on uh, Pease Down, St John, but also Duncanton, Shoshcombe, and some of those villages that are on the on the straight vertical precipices. <laughs> you drive and it's straight down, and then we go through to Wellow, and then we start matching up, um, meeting up with Freshford. So all of the areas, and then the other side of Bath, Bath Easton, Bath Ford, Bath Hampton, then right the way around the top, Kelston and all those areas. So basically look at the map. The only area, it's probably easier to see, the only areas we're not covering is the central Bath, but we've got a sort of uh, squishy edge because we actually have, um, we are covering Coombe Down and Fox Hill. That's some, a separate bit of money, but we're definitely covering that area. And, um, Canesham and Saltford, mainly because there are other services that we would overlap with. But when in doubt, email me and uh, we, we it's a confidential free service one to one. And uh, we help. We're sort of matchmakers. We will match you up with whichever service is appropriate to your need. And why also we want to meet all you guys, because all of you are potential um, people that we can refer to. So fantastic. That's brilliant, Denise. And yeah, the village agents do a fantastic job and it's great to see them covering more parts of the district. Lovely. Any Anyone got any comments or questions for Denise? No? Oh, Ian, Ian. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, apologies for uh, joining late. Um, I've only just uh, found the uh, details for the uh, the talk. Um, just came in on uh, what um, uh, Denise was saying. Good to see you again, Denise. Um, I I've, I've totally understand uh, living in this uh, rural area and being over 60 myself, um, well over 60. Um, uh, the need for actual driving, but we're having our bus services cut and there's a big movement in the Chew Valley to um, to actually uh, uh, to actually look at um, 
uh, retaining some of the bus services that we've actually got and uh, perhaps in um, in future times enhancing them and I just wondered if you'd like to com uh, comment on the sustainability of um, driving as we move forward towards 2030 and net zero. Well, it's interesting. Um, I was part of the original Go Zero initiative in, in True Magna years and years ago, which was around tr transition time when people didn't even know what carbon was all about. So, yes, people were talking about we've got to give up cars, we've got to give up cars. Um, and actually, um, it is the biggest decision that people have to make when you don't have a bus in anywhere near you. In Chu Magna, if you go, if you, you there's one bus to, to Bath per week, so you can't go arrange to go by public transport to Bath. Actually, do something like have an appointment somewhere, have lunch, and come back easily. It's just impossible. So many other areas are very, very restricted. Solution going forwards, my opinion is, and also a lot of the public transport now is rattling along with hardly anyone in it. So um, I'm a firm believer in bespoke um, community led transport solutions. And we've got some excellent examples in the Chew Valley. We set up 12 years ago, pretty much at the same time as the village agents. We set up the community car scheme, which is we've got about 30, nearly 40 volunteers um, who use their own cars to help transport people to vital medical um, appointments and because you can't get there there was one of our first passengers was a lady who was paying 60 pounds for a 10 minute appointment which she needed every four weeks eventually she had to stop going to her appointments because she couldn't afford 60 quid every time so now uh, then we managed to get her onto an affordable arrangement volunteers um, offering their own time in cars and there are other 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 solutions, but you're completely right. The fact is that people still need to move around, but how do we do it more sustainably? How do we do it more joined up? There's so many ideas out there and absolutely. And the just big, big thing for me is that please, 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 when you start organizing events, workshops, anything else, always, always consider how people are going to get to them. Um, that's what the great last two years has meant that people haven't had to travel. But when people start to have to get to places, please consider how they're going to get there. Great. Thanks, Denise. Um, and thank you, Ian, for your question. Um, right. Uh, Kate, is there anything you want to add to what Denise has said? No, I think Denise has covered it. <laughs> But yes, I'm Kate Stovey. I'm the new village agent covering Peace Down, St John, Camerton, Dunkerton, and Shoscombe. Um, yeah, and it, it, as, as Denise says, really, we are here. We're here to see individuals, um, to signpost, to refer, and if we can, to problem solve for them or in, in conjunction with them. Um, and just refer as normal to, hopefully you've got the numbers. I'm sure Denise has shared all of the, the main contact details. Um, but yeah, so I've only been in post about four weeks. Uh, I've just had my very first referral. <laughs> it's all networking at the moment, hence I wanted to come along. I've been to these meetings before in a previous role with St Monica Trust. Um, so yeah, so I'm new for this role. So hopefully I will, um, yeah, I'll see some of you over the course of the next few weeks. That's great, thank Kate. Thank you. Thank yes. you. And, and, a, and a plug at this point as well for the Hive in uh, Pease Down St John. Absolutely. It is in a great venue and I can see myself spending quite a lot of time there. <laughs> it's also got a wonderful cafe, so please do go along. It it's has, really, yeah. Yeah, I'm really lucky, actually. I didn't know even know it existed because it's not an area I know I had known very well. Um, and one of the joys is, yeah, is meeting all the community workers and, and all the volunteers and, and yeah, there's a lot going on in Pease Down and in Camerton too. There is, I live in Pease Down, so ah. yeah, there is, there's, there's a lot going on, it's a big village, but the Hive was um, formerly our, our youth hub in the village yeah. and it's now a community centre and they've got spaces for hire and it's very vibrant yeah. and Swallow are running a community cafe in there, so yeah, do... I'll, I'll try and pop the a link into their website. So if you're looking for a venue in this area, it's, it's a really good one. 
it's also unbelievably reasonably priced to hire the rooms i was shocked <laughs> it really is very good value yeah yeah brilliant thanks kate yes right sim i've picked up your message that you need to get away so we'll go to you next uh thank you very much can you hear me this is a new headset <laughs> Okay, good stuff. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see some familiar faces and some new people as well. Uh, I'm Sim from Great Western Credit Union. Uh, we are a credit union, much as I'm sure you're accustomed to working with credit unions uh, that operates in the Bristol, Bath and surrounding area. We've recently changed from being Bristol Credit Union to being Great Western Credit Union, which is a reflection of the change in our territory. So we, uh, like all credit unions, operate on a specific geographic common bond. Um, and that's just essentially our catchment area that we operate in. So previously operating as Bristol Credit Union, that probably wasn't doing us any favours as far as accurately describing who we are and what we do, because we were serving Bristol, Bath and the surrounding region as well. Now, however, since uh, last year, we've changed our common bond to also include the four neighbouring counties as well. So we cover Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, Dorset and most of Somerset as well. Great Western Credit Union, therefore, more accurately reflects what we do. Um, the bit of the business that I look after is called Money at Work, and Money at Work is a financial well-being initiative for employers who are interested in doing more for their people than just paying them at the end of the month. Um, it's more around their holistic welfare, recognising that their stresses and strains outside of work are obviously impacting their ability to perform in work. Uh, workplace relationships, productivity, absenteeism, all these things that are impacted by the stress and the anxiety that people are, associate with finances outside of work. This is going to become a way more significant thing in the, in the upcoming months. There, there's no doubt in my mind about it. The inflation rise figures just announced today by the Bank of England, if nothing else, give you an indication of how acute this problem will become. Um, we are therefore helping as many employers as we possibly can get enrolled onto the scheme. It's a free initiative. And essentially what we help people to do is to save and to borrow through their payroll by deduction at source. The beauty of the scheme um, is that because we do it at source and it's a separate facility from their day to day banking, wherever that might be on the high street, people tend to have a lot more success in having good intentions on payday and squirreling some money away for a rainy day, but actually keeping that money in their savings facility as well, rather than if everything on the, on the same smartphone application, they put some money into their savings on payday. And then lo and behold, halfway through the month, they're very easily signing into their smartphone application again and shifting that money back in seconds into their current account so it can be spent, meaning that good intentions are very quickly squandered and the people don't fulfill their financial goals. But more importantly, they don't feel that sense of being financially secure, financially capable, because when a financial shock hits, they've got no savings laid by to be able to deal with it. Instead, what they're having to do is rely on family members and friends or go to payday lenders or sometimes go without as well. And that's um, a much more acute thing that we can expect in the next six to 18 months there or thereabouts. So we've signed up um, a number of employer partners recently, uh, businesses large and small. And actually the size of the employer isn't the critical thing. It's more around the appetite for doing something more for your people than just paying them at the end of the month is acknowledging you know the stresses and strains that exist outside of your employment and how much of an impact that can have whilst they are at work um, Baines local authority is one of our employer partners as is bristol city council so we've got thousands and thousands of employees for those particular employer partners but then on the lower end of the scale we've got people that just got six or seven people employed and actually as i say uh, the, 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 the size of the employer, the number of employees isn't really critical at all. It's more around acknowledging uh, the kind of critical importance of this notion of financial well-being being something that's you know, interconnected with everything else and has a knock-on effect if you don't manage it particularly well. Um, I'll be quiet now because I've already said too much. My contact details are in the chat together with a little YouTube video, which is a really punchy minute and a half explainer of how the scheme works, how you can get in touch and what kind of benefits you can uh, expect to see if you enroll with us. So feel free to pass it on to colleagues, HR managers, financial directors, head of people, head of payroll. Those are the types of conversations I'd like to be having. Uh, so if it sounds like you, then feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much. That's lovely, Sim. Thank you. Anyone got any comments or questions for Sim? No? Okay, I'm going to move on to Natalia. 
I'm sorry. Hi, Natalia, welcome. Hi, hi, Alison. Hi, everyone. Nice to see some familiar faces again and some new ones too. Um, so my name is Natalia. I work for Stand Against Racism and Inequality. Um, a few of you have probably heard of us because um, I've been here and I'm just trying to um, raise awareness on what we do as an organisation um, and also the services that we've been funded to provide for free um, within the Baines area. Um, so we are a hate crime charity and we cover the whole of Avon and Somerset so everything from Somerset, um, um, Bristol, um, North Somerset, Baines and South Gloss as well. Um, so we can provide free one-to-one -one hate crime casework support um, to people that have been victims of hate crime. Um, so if you do kind of ever, you know, come across someone that, you know, you think could do with some extra support or maybe some signposting, then just please feel free to get in touch with us. And even if we can't support them, we'll be able to signpost on. Um, but the what we're doing in Baines at the moment is that I'm trying to raise awareness on hate crime and the fact that there is a specialist support service out there um, because Sari isn't national. Um, you've got Stop Hate UK, which um, is, I guess, bigger because it supports people in different areas of the UK, but actually Stop Hate UK also isn't national and doesn't provide casework everywhere in the UK. Um, so it's just something that we're trying to raise awareness on, really, because anybody could be a victim and it does obviously impact the community quite strongly. Um, and so the way I'm raising awareness is going into schools um, and providing free teacher twilight training sessions on hate crime and things such as racist and homophobic bullying within schools. Um, also going into community groups and raising awareness with groups that might be more vulnerable to becoming victims of hate crime. So for example, um, next week, no, this, this Friday, I'll be going to Bar City Farm to provide a, um, a session um, on hate crime awareness um, there. So if you're, you know, if you're wondering what it's like and would like to learn more, then you can feel free to attend then. That will be from two to four at Bath City Farm. Um, we've also got another awareness session coming up in May for the refugee community in Bath. Um, that will be joint, jointly delivered with Gillian, Gillian House and Bath Welcomes Refugees. Um, and what else? And we also provide free um, hate crime awareness training for any organization, no matter how big or small. So we we worked, we provided one for Alison and Denise have both attended. Um, and so, you know, we just really, really want to make sure that people know that we're here to support the community. Um, and like I said, even if we can't support you directly, we might be able to signpost you on because sometimes uh, people come to us and they've suffered forms of discrimination. Um, and so we're not lawyers, so we might not be able to support with employment law, but we can still signpost on to someone like ACAS or Citizens Advice or um, other people. So um, it's always worth getting in touch. And if you do want to learn more, then I'm always um, you know, really, really happy to have a chat. I'll put my email in the chat as well if anyone wants to get in touch afterwards. Um, but I think that's, oh, and lastly, we'll be launching an allies network, um, hopefully in April. Um, and this is essentially, if you just, you know, if you're in working in the community, which a lot of you are, um, and have connections with the, your local community and just want to learn how to be more of an ally, and want to be a bit more proactive, then we're gonna be launching the allies network, which, is a network that covers the whole of Avon and Somerset. And it's just a space where we can share ideas on how to you know, do things within our community, make sure that people within our community know where to seek support from, um, and just have sort of a network where we can um, communicate these, these ideas really. Um, so if you're interested, then again, um, yeah, please get in touch. That's great. Thanks, Natalia. And yeah, the sessions are really, really interesting, actually. So if you 
do do take advantage of that, that offer. Um, and the funding journal that I mentioned earlier, I also put in the training opportunities that will appear in the uh, interagency bulletin. So again, it's a good place to to look and see what's coming up. And I'm going to bring up Miles next because I know he needs to get away and I try and feature as many of the three SG events as, as I can. But goodness, Miles, you've got a lot going on at the moment. I'm sure you'll be able to tell everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Hassan. And um, yeah, really great to see everyone. Lots of familiar faces and hi to those who I haven't spoken to before. Um, I'm the coordinator at 3SG. And if you don't know what 3SG stands for, then it stands for Bain's Third Sector Group. And essentially, we're a network of over 170 charities, community groups, social enterprises across Bath and North East Somerset. Um, however, we do run lots of events that are not just for our members but also um, are broader than that and we do also advertise some external events as well um, like the the Sari event that is coming up at uh, on the 25th of March actually we got that up on our site at the moment um, so yeah it's um, essentially just to give a quick overview um, if, if you are a third sector organization that's working in that area and you haven't heard about us before then please do get in touch with me um, and I'll put the contact details in the chat in a second and I'm happy to have a conversation and, and see in what ways we, we offer support. We run lots of events, um, some are sort of networking events like our Senior Leaders Network um, and Social Prescribing and Community Activity Network and then others um, are more sort of workshops and trainings where we bring in specialists um, to attend um, to, to run the workshops. So, that's something that we've got loads going on at the moment so we've got over 20 workshops that we're running in partnership with the school for social entrepreneurs um, and it's funded by um, the west of england um, and essentially we've weka sorry um, and essentially we've got um yeah like courses and workshops that uh, are all free available to everyone and it's on things like getting started with fundraising, social media for your organization, um, like future planning, setting up a business. It literally covers like such a broad range of topics. Um, so I'll put the link in the chat to where you can see all of the events. Um, a lot of them are in person as well. Um, and so, yeah, it'd be great to see some of you along there. And as I say, they're open to all. So um, yeah, please do come along. But uh, sorry that I've got to, got to dash, but I'll, I'll pop in the chat all of the details. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks ever so much. Oh, Denise has got a question. No, not a question. Just to say thank you, Miles, for being brilliant at what you're doing. But one of the th lovely things that, that Miles and the team do is net, not only network, but they come up with the most amazing resources, some of which are free, a lot of which are free. And they introduced us to something called Canva, which is the most amazing online um, uh, desktop publishing type of thing. So you can really escalate your game from doing little word documents with little pictures and what have you to, to glossy brochures and what even one off bits and pieces literature so that you can really up your game and the great thing is that canva um offer for um, miles can correct me on this but as a charity we were able to get a free account for 10 users very hugely generous hugely generous i see they're supporting the ukrainian campaign so i imagine that lots of charities and social enterprises are benefiting from this amazing um tool online tool oh, thank, thank you very much denise that's very kind of you <laughs> but um yeah and i'll pop if you want to get our newsletters they're not quite allison's level of like you know she hers are the creme de la creme because they cover everything and there's a, <laughs> whereas we do a weekly newsletter which is just a little bit of a bite-sized version of what what we've got going on but uh yeah i do take my hat off to alison you the interagency ones that you put out every month they're very substantial very impressive oh that's really kind miles i hope everyone finds them useful i'll um what I'll do is I'll pop a little link in, into the chat with our interagency page because you can look back at previous meetings, sign up for the newsletter, look back at previous newsletters from that as well. And, and I think you do um, free funding searches as well. People can book in to use Funds Direct as well, can't they, Miles? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've got funds online account, um, which normally costs organisations over a grand to access, but we've got the account so any of our members can use it for free. There's like over 8,000 funders on this directory, so it's a really handy resource. Brilliant. I'll, I'll let you go. Sarah will understand, Miles. <laughs> Yeah, true. Thanks so much. Apparently so much. that meeting with her next. Yeah. Thank you. Right, Scarlett, is there anything you wanted to add to what Jesse said earlier? Oh yes, yeah, so I, I'm um so I'm Scarlett. I work within the Growth Hub in the West of England Combined Authority. Um so I'm working on a different project to Jesse um at the moment. No worries, no worries. Um, so the, the project that I'm working on, actually, it's probably just following on from the right people, I reckon. Um, it's called the Migrant Business Support Programme. Um, the idea of it being to ensure that we um, make business support accessible to, to everyone. Um, so I, we're working on it with ACH. Um, I'm sure a few people on here may have heard of them already, but it's a a housing Association for Refugees and Migrants in the West of England. Um, I think they've also got an office in the West Midlands and Coventry. Uh, so yeah, Birmingham and Coventry they cover as well. But um, yeah, so they're, they're kind of offering, uh, the, I'll probably go into a bit about why it's different to our usual business support. Um, so our usual business support would just have uh, someone come to us uh, who's already got a business and we would try and uh, send them to different support in, in the West of England. Um, and I do use, sometimes speak to people and say, oh, have you thought about Canva as well? Because I've used it before as well, and it is great. Uh, <laughs> and um, the, but what we found was that a lot of the people who are accessing our business support in the West of England are generally um, white British born males. So we were trying to make sure that we can, you know, how, how do we, reach out to other communities women like uh, like anyone who isn't accessing us and, and, and why are they not accessing us at the moment because there are businesses that are being run um so obviously we we should be able to offer that same same level of support to everyone um so then the reason so ach are leading on the project and they've got the expertise of working with refugees and migrants as they move to to england or to to the west of england um, and so the reason why we it's it's kind of quite a wraparound level of support is you get the support through ACH. So we've got ESOL courses for anyone who wants to improve their English and that could be holding them back from, from starting up their business. That could be a reason why they haven't accessed business support before. Um, or it could be just that they don't know that, that there is that support available. So um, our eligibility criteria is for anyone who does not have an EU, EEA, Swiss or UK passport, um, but they're based in the west of England, so we cover Bristol, North East Somerset, North Somerset, Baines and South Gloucestershire. Um, and yeah, so and we, we can support anyone at any level as well, so it could be that they have thought about running a business and they just want to speak to someone to get some more information. It could be that they've already that they're already running a business. It could just be that they that they're starting up, um, or or it could just be that they want some information. So so yeah, we we can offer uh, support for all levels. Or it could be that they that there's some barriers that they that are stopping them from running a business. So it could be that we could find find a way of overcoming those barriers with them and supporting them to to get to where they want to be so yeah i hope that gives a bit of an overview thanks scarlett very much appreciated anyone got any comments or questions no okay thank you um who have we got next laura laura nichols Oh yeah, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, um, sorry, I'm Zooming from home today and we're a bit COVID-ish, so we've got the camera off, but um, yeah, I'll be good to talk. So um, I'm the Community Engagement Officer at the Roman Baths and City of Bath World Heritage Centre. So my role's a little bit different to some people that have spoken. Um, 
my role essentially is me going out and talking to people about things that I find interesting about the Romans and our um, world heritage and history of Bath, but also things that I think um, other people will find interesting too, and they, invariably they do. Um, so I can offer lots of different things to um, your groups, community groups that you work with. Um, I've got a bag full of Roman artefacts that I can pop in my car and come and speak to you and your groups. And um, so we can do some handling sessions and um, talk about history of your local area. Um, I'm also able to do virtual sessions, um, normally with my camera on. Um, so I can do a session, if you've got a group and a projector, then I can beam into your homes um, and do some talks and some interactive stuff. Um, we've also got the brand new Claw Learning Centre you may have heard of as part of our Archway project, um, also funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Um, so that is um, open. We've started to trial some groups, doing some activity sessions over a few weeks there. Um, so I've recently completed a group called, sorry, a group from the Bath Carers Centre. Um, we had a session called Fred's Through Time, which was a um, six week course looking at the history of textiles in Bath, um, some handling objects and some craft thrown in as well, and some tea and biscuits as well. Um, so that was a nice session. Um, we've also got some other sessions coming up with other groups in Bath. So you can come to us, we can come to you. Um, we can do talks. If you've got ideas for sessions or want to know about your local history, do feel free to get in touch as well. We're quite adaptable. Um, so yeah, anything that you think we might be able to offer to you, do get in touch because we're always open to new ideas as well. So I've put my email address a couple of times in the chat already, um, but I'll pop it in again as well if you want it. Thank you. That's lovely. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Um, who have we got next? Rachel, Rachel Potter. Thank you for waiting so patiently, Rachel. Hi there. Hi, everyone. A few faces that I know, and I, I assume some of you might know me as well. So I work for Cooth, um, and it's a young person service. So it's the free, safe and anonymous space that young people can access whenever they want to. Um, I cover BNSSG and Dorset and quite a lot of the Southwest as well as um, Baines. Um, so I go out and I talk to young people. We've been doing a lot of virtual um, deliveries at the moment. Um, I also talk to GPs, anybody who will listen to me really um, about what we offer for young people so it's a space that young people can go and talk to our, our online team so they can have counselling they can drop in for one session or they can have structured support over a number of, of weeks um, and have a, an hour's chat with with us but there's also peer support on the website so they need to sign up and create a unique username um, and then they can drop in and out and use the um, use the website it is a website not an app <clears throat> excuse me so um, young people can access it from any internet enabled device they don't need to have it on their phone um, and they can do all sorts of different things as well so there's peer support in the form of forums now everything is pre-moderated before it goes live on our site so that means that we can make sure everything stays um, an anonymous there's nothing that can identify young people but it also means that we can pick up anything that's concerning so any safeguarding issues we will work alongside those young people um, signpost them to local agencies and organizations so it's really really good to hear you know everything that's going on in Baines as well as further about out as well so um, as well as you signposting young people to us we can signpost to your agencies as well uh, we have a magazine online um, so young people can write things and they can submit that to us we can get that published so again it's young people reading um, other young people's experiences rather than just us adults saying this is what you should do and this is where you should go um, we have uh, podcasts on Spotify so you, um, young people can search those um, listen to them for free and uh, we've also got activities as well so they can take things offline so as well as they can just come and get support from us they can take things off so things like creating an activity jar or a coping box creating a superhero things like that that they can do um, in their own time as well um, as I say it's anonymous we are a commission service so it's free at point of access for any young person um, no um, no threshold and um, self-referral so anybody can access whenever they want to. Um, we do have an adult service but we haven't been commissioned in Baines yet. The closest we've got is Gloucestershire so um, I know someone was said that they lived in Gloucestershire so that's an 18 plus service. It's something that we are having conversations with um, commissioners um, because we're finding that a lot of um, people want a bit more support particularly parents and carers. Um, you know 
education, education staff, um, health uh, staff, they can be parents as well, rather than just the staff. So, but that's things that, that people are wanting a bit more support. We've also started running more regional sessions, so virtual sessions. So rather than pinpointing a school or a college, so I'm running a, a parents and carers session for a particular school, but that's something that we've got a few regional sessions. So we've got one for um, transition. So year six um, pupils going in, I'll be doing one for healthcare professionals. So I'll pop that information in the, um, in the chat as well. So if anybody wants me to come along to any sessions or any meetings and just tell people a little bit more, I'm I'm more than happy to do that and my contact details are in the chat as well so if anybody's got any questions please just get to, in touch with me or shout out now. Yeah thank you Rachel. Anything from anyone? Oh Ellen, Ellen's got a hand up. Hi. Um, hi Rachel, I was just wondering what sort of age is your service suitable for in terms of children? What's Yeah I forgot that bit, it's <laughs> age 11 up until their 19th birthday. Okay, um, perfect. Across pretty much all of the areas that I that I spoke about. Um, in really? Swindon, we're eleven to twenty-five, so we can extend if if we get the the budget. But uh, yeah, okay, 11, eleven to nineteen. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. And again, if you want to drop me an email with a, you know some blurb, and I'll get that in the interagency because I'm not sure we've ever featured Cooth. Okay, um, absolutely. In yeah. There. So yeah. Yeah, and as I say, that offers to anyone that ever wants anything promoting, just send it to me and I, I can pop it in. Um, right, got two more left, I think. So Geraldine, are you still with us? Yes. Geraldine, you? Hi. Sorry. Um, hi, my name's Geraldine Rust. Um, I'm employability support lead for Julian House and I run the Build a Bike scheme um, here in Bath. Um, basically just here really to connect, let people know that we are a service. Um, I know with the situation talking about cars and getting around and transport is a big thing at the moment. Hence, come and do the build a bike course because you get a bike at the end of it. Um, so just really wanted to do a bit of networking. There's a lot of people out there who do not have forms of transport. Um, lately, I've been working with people who live in the villages or who have come in from, you know, where the bus services are not great. Um, there's no restrictions to who gets referred. The courses run kind of every Tuesday. We have four in, four clients in the morning, four clients in the afternoon. Um, I've recently started working with Youth Connect. I don't know whether anyone's here from Youth Connect, but um, really great, you know, collaboration going on there with the young people of today, getting them out cycling. Um, it's proven to help mental health, which I don't know, I'm finding a lot of my clients who are getting referred at the moment are having severe mental health issues um so just really wanted to kind of let people know that this is a service um it's really good for me to know that what's going on as well because i often you know can refer people on to services once they've done the course um so yeah so just really wanted to get it out there i'll put the details on the chat but you can go on the julian house website um, we have been working as well recently, not so much in Baines, but in Trowbridge with um, refugees. So anybody who has refugees in their service, um, please do feel free to refer them. Um, great for, you know, morale, language barriers, um, getting them in the workplace. So, yeah, just just really wanted to put it up there. And Alison, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Geraldine. Yeah, we did pop a little article in the last interagency, but I haven't yes, realized she it did. was quite as open. Uh, so it's really yeah, good I to mean, hear you say that. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to kind of work. I mean, you know, we are a homeless child, but we work across the board and we're trying to just reach out to as many organizations as possible. So we have been working with um mild learning difficulties, we've worked with Help the Heroes, we're kind of just trying to expand. And it's just basically giving people something to do, you know, if they're at a loose end, it's it's only four weeks, but it's three hours and they get a bicycle, which now it's coming up to summer is perfect. Um, so, yeah, just trying to raise awareness, really, of what we do and, and get the message out there. 
Well, that's brilliant. And I think working with young people is really positive activity. I can see that side oh, of it really it's, taking it's off. Been, it's been fantastic. Working with Youth Connect has just been brilliant because we've had, you know, um, young people coming from all over, just not just Baines, um, and parents bringing them down and, you know, complex, complex kids really and it's just been really good so yeah just want to put it out there and get as many people to refer as possible especially coming up to summer I want full courses <laughs> yeah that's brilliant <laughs> thanks ever so much really appreciate that so I think it's just Ian now Ian welcome thank you just unmuted um yeah um just here from Stowe uh, Sutton Parish Council, really, and um, uh, nothing, nothing to add to the conversation. It's just really interesting to um, listen to all the uh, uh, services that are available. Um, just, uh, just a plea, okay. I don't want to say it's like the broken record, but please consider. Um, uh, uh services for the rural areas we um you might think of the tube valley as being a very affluent area um yes it is quite affluent there's no getting away from that but there are pockets of poverty um we are we are having people using food banks etc etc just like everywhere okay um so yes it's good to hear these services thank you very much Alison. No, thank you, Ian, and we really do appreciate it when parishes come along as well, because it, it is such a useful meeting. And there are community spaces in the Chew Valley where, you know, services can go and um, promote and talk to people face to face. So always worth bearing in mind. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, that was a really, really useful meeting. I don't think I've missed anybody, have I? If I have, shout now. No? OK. Well, thank you again for your time and um, I hope you found it useful and you know where our team are if you need any support or help. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at another interagency soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Bye. Thanks, Alison.